Hello and welcome back to today's video lesson. I don't know about you, but I cannot believe that this is our second to last um, virtual math class of sixth grade. Seventh grade is so, so close. Um, I'm excited, I know you are excited as well. Um, and let me tell you just for a brief moment here, you are in for a treat in seventh grade. Um, the seventh grade teachers are awesome and they are so excited to have you. Um, that being said, we do have two more days of video lessons. Um, ironically, they are both about displaying data. So today is displaying data day one. Um, remember, data is just our collection of numbers that we have found, um, either through research, through making up, um, or recording of other numbers. Um, we're going to look at line plots today. Um, line plots are super simple. It is just a graph that shows the frequency of a set of data. Um, we do want to make a note here, and I forgot to squeeze this in. Frequency is how often something occurs. And it is best used under 25 data points. Um, that would be perfect for, um, let's say, ages in our math class. Um, we're going to have some people who are 11, some people who are 12, some people who are 13, um, maybe somebody who's 14. And then we would just put a mark. This is our line. And then we put a mark for each person's age. And every time you'd go down, um, so our math class, if we had 25 people, we would end up with 25 X's. That would allow you to visually see how many people are at each age. Um, we will also today be looking at box plots. Um, those highlight key parts of the data. Uh, we're not actually going to make any of those ourselves. We're just gonna look at some that I draw and we'll take a look at together. Awesome. So moving on, um, a line plot is super simple. So we're gonna have a page called line plots. Um, and I have some data chosen right here for us. Six, four, six, two, sorry, six, four, six, seven, two, seven, six, seven, four, two, seven, three. Um, there are just two parts to our number. I guess there's three parts. We're going to first draw our line. Take my ruler. Draw my line. Our second step is going to be to label the line. So I see we have numbers two to seven. So I'm gonna start here, two, and we're not gonna skip any, even though I know there are no fives in here, we're still going to have a five in there. I guess my line didn't need to be quite that long, so I'll cut it back here. And then our third step is going to be to plot our data. That's where we just put an X on the line over each number as it occurs. So I'm just gonna go through these. I'm gonna go say six, put an X over six, four, another six, a seven, two, seven, six, seven, another four, another two, another seven, another three. Um, and that's how we're plotting line points. You will notice it makes it super easy to find the mode. Um, the mode is just the highest stack. And there is our line plot. Um, you could do it with any set of data. Um, in fact, we can give us another set. I'll make it up real fast. Let's go 11, 14, 12, 13, 5, sorry, 16, 14, 14, 11, 13, 
16, 11, 11, 11. All right, there's our set of data. We're gonna go through our same three steps with this second set of data. All right. Our first step is going to be to draw the line. Our second step is to label the line. We're gonna look for our, our highest number and our lowest number. So we know we're gonna to have to go all the way from 11 through 16. I didn't make that one quite long enough. I made the first one too short, spread those out. We'll get it done eventually. And then our third step is to plot the data. So you have an 11, 14, 12, 13, 16, 14, another 14. Now you don't have to, 11, you don't have to mark them off. I like to, so I don't get lost but it's completely up to you. Then we have a 13, another 16, and then one, two, three more 11s. All right, see if you can pick out which one is the mode or the one that occurs the most often. Awesome, if you chose 11, 11 is the mode. We know that just because it is all stacked up. Awesome, and that's line plots. Uh, we, we'll have some practice in IXL, both um, reading them as well as creating our own, um, and you're gonna rock it. In the meantime, we're gonna jump over to box plots. Box plots. They highlight key information. They highlight these. They highlight the low point. The highest point. And then they take three more. They have the um, median. Sorry, the mean, not the median, they have the mean. Then they also have the first quartile, which means 25%. And then the third quartile, which is where they're, you're at 75% of the data points. Um, so you'll see them. Your box plots will look like this. And I'm gonna keep our colors consistent with the last one. You have your line. Your line goes all the way. And then you're going to have your median, your first to third, interquartile ranges and then you have what's called your whisker and they go all the way from the low number to the high number so we're just going to label these different points this one is one your low number this one over here is your high number then you have your mean your first quartile and your third quartile. So we'll match those numbers up here with what they are down here. Um, your first quartile and your third quartile, um, you'll dive more into into seventh grade. We just wanna get you familiar right now. Um, it will have to do with the 20, The you separate your data into quarters. So you have one quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and then your high one. So effectively, you have a quarter of your data here, a quarter of your data here, quarter of your data here, and then the last quarter here. 
Um, we like to focus in statistics on the middle numbers um, because most of your data is held in the middle, 50%. Um, so this part right here actually makes up your middle 50%. Um, so in order to practice, just to see what you're going to look like, um, in IXL on this, I'm going to jump in with us, pull that up there. Awesome. We're in the sixth grade. Should be GG4, I believe, or GG20. It is GG20. So as you'll notice, it's only interpreting them, which means we're viewing them and seeing what it, what it is saying. So this says the city of Newburgh is developing new hours of operation for its museums based on attendance. They study how many people attend the museum each day. The box and whisker plot shows the results. So if we look, it asks us, sorry, it says, what is the median number of visitors? So if we look back here, so sorry, that is the mean or the median. Um, it is just the median. I confused those two. I'm so sorry. Um, the median is right in the middle. So it's going to be where three is. So it's going to be right where this dot is, which is halfway between eight and 12. So that will be 10. All right, on this box and whisker plot, it's asking for the minimum value. Um, each of these goes by 10. The minimum, let's look at where ours is. The lowest point is gonna be our minimum. It's gonna be one, so that's way over here. 20, counting backwards by tens would put us at 10. All right, we're looking at the minimum value again. As we know, it's the farthest to the left um, which on this one is going to be 68. Well, not 658, just 68. Awesome. Um, we'll do this last one together and I'm going to send you off into the world of practicing. Um, this one is asking for the maximum value. If we look back at our drawing, the maximum is number two, the highest point. And so then we'll go back to IXL and the highest point is farthest to the right. So it is 10 thousand. Awesome. If you have any questions at all, um, please let us know. You are fantastic and you're going to do great things. Um, two more virtual lessons left and then you're practically seventh graders. We will have a special um, special thing on Schoology on Thursday um, just for our last day so you don't want to miss that. But in terms of video lessons, we've got this one and one more to go.